Let's unpack my bag for my first solo backpacking trip across the Trans-Catalina Trail. A lot of the gear was borrowed from either my friends or my family because I wanted to kind of test out to see what I liked, what I might need for the future, so that I'm not just spending a bunch of excess money that I don't need to spend. Starting off with my backpack, I used the Osprey Kite 46 liter pack. A lot of people on the trail had about this size, if not bigger, and I think the size worked out perfectly. I had plenty of room. I saw some people with like 60 plus liter bags and it just looked like too much. Note that for the Trans Catalina Trail, they do have a lot of amenities, so you don't need to bring as much stuff as you think you might. What's strapped on the bottom is my sleeping bag. It's rated to 15 degrees Fahrenheit and it ended up being perfect for the trip. My trip was on December 1st through the 3rd, so it was kind of the start of the cold season. 52 degrees Fahrenheit to 65 degrees Fahrenheit, which was 11 to 18 degrees Celsius. Not too cold and this did perfect. Next on the outside of the pack, I have this little blow up lantern that's solar powered that I had hooked on so that it could charge. This was super helpful at night because I would put it on my table or hang it near my campsite or even just have it in my tent and it changes colors and I just thought it was super useful, very lightweight and easy and solar powered. This plus the head torch were the only lights I had and they were perfect for what I needed. Of course I had a hat, very important because most of the trail is exposed. Claw clip. Before going I actually did purchase this fire beaner clamp from REI. Really the whole time I just used it as a carabiner but it also has like a mini knife for fishing wire type things, um, a bottle opener, and it works as a lighter. So that's kind of why I got it. I just thought it was a cool safety multi-purpose tool. Attached to that, I have my Kula cloth. This is a sustainable alternative to using toilet paper when you have to go out and pee in the wild, um, especially for girls. It's annoying because you're not digging holes when you're peeing, but then you have to store the toilet paper. And this is my first time using this. It was 20 bucks from REI. Um, most of the trail actually had toilets and the campsites had toilets, so I only needed to use it one time when my campsite was really far away and I peed in the middle of the night. There was actually another girl from Boston on the trail who had the exact same print as me, so we kind of like bonded over that. Um, hand sanitizer. And then this is my birdie alarm clip. I always bring it when I'm traveling. Kind of dumb maybe for hiking. Maybe I should have had pepper spray instead, but good little safety trick because I was a girl on my own. Um, What's great about the Trans Catalina Trail though is I made so many friends along the way. A lot of people are staying at the same sites. So I always felt safe. I was almost always hiking with someone. Sometimes I was on my own, but I made a lot of friends. So if you're solo, know that it's a really good trip for a first backpacking trip. There is this really easy accessible pouch on the back side. It's what I put anything that I was grabbing while I was hiking in. Full disclosure, I did unpack some things and then repacked them in when I got home because I was like, shoot, I wanna film a video. Um, so have car key and house key, of course. Uh, just a little wallet with my ID and my credit card and a little bit of cash in it. I ended up not having to use the cash, but I brought it just in case. There's a place called Airport in the Sky where you can get lunch or breakfast along the second day of the hike. Um, so nice to have a little money because everyone kind of stops there. Also, you need money if one in two harbors you wanna get some food or souvenirs and same with Avalon. Hair tie. This was my little makeshift first aid kit that I brought in my reusable bag. Mostly what's in there are medications, um, some ibuprofen, which I did take because I was so sore and my blisters were hurting. A little bit of Dramamine because the boat over can be a bit rocky. The one on the way there was especially bad for us. And Excedrin in case I got a headache. And these blister band-aids were key. I bought them at CVS before going. I'm very prone to pinch blisters because my toes curl underneath each other. I want to go to REI actually. I'm probably going to go this week. Try to figure out if I should get some sort of liner sock to help with that. Um, but highly recommend blister band-aids and also it's in another pocket but I have like a friction blister stick that I also will use proactively. In addition I just have some band-aids in here, some gauze, tape, tweezers, nail clippers, antibiotic cream and yeah that's pretty much it. Next I have any snacks that I might want on the trail. I made my own trail mix before going so I just used this sunflower seed bag from Trader Joe's, added some almonds, some pumpkin seeds, chocolate chips, and apricots. I actually, and I'll talk about food more later, um, I actually didn't even open this the entire time. I brought more food than I needed but always good to have extra. I bought these energy shoes from REI for three dollars also on the day before my trip. I always see marathon runners or half marathon runners eat them. Um, really good. I used about half the pack. This is the pink lemonade flavor. Um, nice little energy bites. One of the guys on the trail actually gave me one of their energy goos that are in the same section of REI and that was interesting as well, but it was good right before one of our really steep climbs. And that's all I have in that pocket. That's the easy access pocket. The other one, you unclip the bag and this is also easy access here. Here's my blister prevention stick, friction stick. This little bag was also from my mom. It just, before it had just some toilet paper in it, I actually moved the toilet paper to the smaller pockets on the side because I used to miss tissues throughout the hike 
because I tend to get a bit of a runny nose. This was my other form of light. It's a head torch. I've had it for ages um, and I brought, this is battery powered, not USB powered. I do have a USB powered one. I just don't know where it is. You definitely need this for nighttime, especially if you're going in the winter and the sun setting at 4.30 like it was for me. Also bring a spare pair of batteries. Headphones, I didn't even use them. I shoved all my underwear in there, however much underwear plus a little bit. Brought a mask, didn't need a mask. I thought I might for the fairy. Mini deodorant, body sunscreen, face sunscreen, extra pair of sunglasses, also probably didn't need them. Don't know why I brought so much underwear. And then some other snacks. I brought two little chocolate bars. I ate one of them, I forgot about the other. I bought three protein bars, ideally for lunch each day. I ended up eating it on the first day. On the second day, since I went to airport in the sky, I was still full from the food there. I ended up catching the earlier fairy back on the third day. So I did eat the second protein bar, but that was once I got to my car when I was on the mainland. And this is the third one that I never ate. Easy lunches for on the trail. This pack also has one side pocket and then one side compartment that allows you to reach into the main compartment. I have my Kindle so that I could read at night. I tried to read, but honestly, I just fell asleep. I was so tired. But a Kindle and I downloaded a couple books on it. And then my battery pack. This is a 10,000 amp. I actually, I don't know. I don't know what the unit is, but it has 10,000 power. Uh, fully charged it before going. And I think after my last charge, I still had about 30% in it. Definitely bring a battery pack. I know some people whose phones completely died on the trip and they were sad. I really like this one. I got it before this summer for when I traveled to Italy. It just plugs right in. And then what's really great about this one is the cords are built in so you don't even have to remember cords separately. Highly recommend. In the front of this pack is a stuff pocket. So this was my long sleeve shirt from the last day that I need to wash. Also in a minute, I'll go through all the clothes I brought. Okay, now going into the big pocket. For shoes, I had my hiking boots. They were on my feet, so not in my pack. Um, these are Solomon's. I got them a few years ago and I love them because they're very light and they go up my ankle, which my previous hiking boots were lower. So they're really good for protecting ankle sprains. And as if anyone knows Solomon's, they have really good grip on the bottom. I still got a few blisters. And so I think that has to do with not having liner socks and just the way my feet are shaped. If you don't have good hiking shoes already, go to REI and have them test out a few pairs on your feet and figure out what you like the most. I really liked how these felt and I liked how lightweight they were. Also when talking about shoes, the length of hiking I did was 25.5 miles or about 41 kilometers. That's almost a marathon plus a lot of elevation gain. I don't know the exact elevation gain. And I hiked from Avalon to Two Harbors through Blackjack and Little Harbor Campground. I did not do the Parsons Landing Loop. I considered it and I'm grateful I didn't do it because as it was my first trip, I don't think I could have put that many miles on my feet and I put this on my back the whole time and been okay with it. Also, I was doing it in three days, two nights, which would have been a lot. It would have been like 14 miles on the second day, which after the first day, which was the hardest, I, I could not have done that. I'm going to go back sometime and do that loop. But yeah, these shoes held up. You definitely should bring a second pair of shoes as well for when you're around the campsite. I brought these, the EVA plasticky Birkenstocks. I have been wearing them nonstop ever since I got them. A little over a year ago, they're totally trashed. I want to buy a new pair, but I can't even find them. I think they're totally sold out, this pair. Would highly recommend. These are super, super lightweight as well. You can strap them to the outside of your bag, but mine fit right on top. I did briefly consider bringing my Tiva Hurricane shoes instead of my Birks, um, just because I thought if my blisters do pop up, which I know they do sometimes when I'm hiking, that I might like switching from my hiking boots to my Tevas. I've hiked in these Tevas around Albania and they were really good, really sturdy. Um, but I ultimately, I weighed them both and I think these were two to three times more weight. So I went with my Birks and they were fine. I ended up being fine. Okay, I brought a little towel. This was good for the second day at the end of the hike because we all went for a swim. Um, this one was a bit small, but it was fine as long as it allowed you to dry off a little bit. And then I wrapped my Birks in it on the last day because they were a bit muddy, like wet sand. And also on the last morning, there was a lot of condensation and I didn't want to sit on the wet bench. So I just threw it over the bench. Speaking of campsites, I stayed at Blackjack campsite and I stayed at Little Harbor campsite. Blackjack's up in the hills. You don't have an ocean view and it's very basic, but it does have a bathroom and water. They actually, the water wasn't working. So they provided us a bunch of big water bottles that we could use. Um, and then they have bison boxes at both of the campsites. So that allows you to store your foods. So the bison, foxes, and crows do not get it. So you don't have to bring a bear box, which was really nice. I also used it to organize a lot of stuff from my bag. In my tent, all I had with me were my valuables and whatever I might need at nighttime. 
Also, I booked my campsites last minute, so kind of got whatever I could get. I stayed at Blackjack Campsite number four, which was kind of right at the trailhead when you finish the first day's hike. Most people might not like it because it's not as private, but it is right next to the bathrooms, which was nice. And as a solo backpacker, I kind of find it comfortable actually knowing I had people nearby, especially the three girls I met on the first day. And then there was a group of moms. I don't know if they're actually moms, but around that age uh, nearby as well. And then some guys that I met the next day. But overall, other than the fact is at the start of the trailhead, um, it was a really good spot. For Little Harbor, I stayed at campsite 10 and I'm convinced someone canceled and that's why I got that one because it was right on the beach. Gorgeous place to watch the sunset. The girls I became friends with came and hung out by me too. And I thought it was gonna be windy because it was right by the beach, but it wasn't. So amazing camp spot, would highly recommend. Also had water and bathrooms. Those were porta potties, so not as nice. And um, bear box, bison boxes, whatever they're called. Okay. <laughs> I had a tripod, I used it one time. Probably shouldn't have brought it, but it kind of works as a self-defense stick too. This was my kind of toiletry bag that I had next to me. I brought toe warmers, I didn't need them. Mini hairbrush, good to use. Toothpaste and my bamboo toothbrush. This is some like coconut oil stuff for bug bites. I didn't get any bug bites, so I didn't have to use it. Extra hair ties, and I had some cooking stuff in here too, so I kept my spoon and fork in there, and then the mini spatula, all I used from this was the spoon. And my loop earplugs, which also were very critical for me because when I'm sleeping alone, I got a bit anxious um, just with any rustling noises. Most of the time it was the tent, but for some reason I thought it was people walking right outside of my tent. And I just don't think I could have slept if I didn't have these. People might say that's not safe and I should be able to hear what's outside, but I don't know. I valued my sleep and I slept really well with them. This was a tent I borrowed from my friend. It's a two person tent. Um, it has the bug net and then the outer net as well. It's kind of partially broken, um, but it, it did the job. Next is cooking stuff. This fuel can is too big, but the reason I have it is because originally I had this fuel can, but they ask you on the ferry, sometimes depending on the ferry and who's checking you in, they go, oh, do you have anything that can be flammable? And I got nervous and I was like, like the cooking stuff? And they're like, yeah. It's like, oh yeah? And I couldn't bring it on the boat. I didn't realize that beforehand. Um, they wrote my name on it, so I was able to pick it up when I got back. But I did have to buy this for like $14 from the Conservancy when I did get to Avalon, um, which is fine, supporting the Conservancy. Um, there's a lot in it left too. Probably don't need it this big if you're on your own. These were from my friend. Pot, it's the only thing I needed for cooking. I mostly just boiled water in it or had oatmeal. I used inside of the pot to store things, including this cooker, which I think is so cool and I really wanna get one. It's a really tiny little cooker device that screws onto the top of the gas thing. And then the lighter is part of it and you twist this thing for the gas, strike the latch on the lighter. It's really tiny and lightweight. I really like it. I think it's cute and I want one. It's on my REI wish list. I just cut up a piece of a sponge and then I have my Dr. Bronner soap, which is always the soap I use when I travel places because it's better for the plants. Like it's fine if you pour it on plants, I've heard. So I use this and I really didn't even have to wash my dishes that much based on how I cook, but it also works well for like body wash and hand wash and it has 18 uses, so good soap to have. I brought four tea packets, two for the morning, two for night. I only had my two nighttime teas, not morning teas. There's a reason for that. I'll talk about it in like two seconds. And then I have one Jeff peanut butter left. My mom had had these in our cabinet from a hotel she grabbed them from. I brought two originally to go in my oats for breakfast. My oats are obviously not in here because I ate them already, but these were the oats that I had because I have other packets, just the typical things. I We've had them in our cabinet forever and I would just, I just boiled water however much I needed, poured the oats in it, let it sat for a little bit, put some peanut butter in it on the second day and had my oats. I do think these were probably too small of breakfast to have. I don't think there was enough calories in them. I should have had maybe a double packet. So things to note for next time. Or I should have put the nuts in it. That actually would have been a really good idea. The trail mix that I didn't eat, I should have put that in my oats. Since I didn't bring a mug for my hot tea, I was using this to drink my nighttime tea. So I'd boil water for my MRE, put the water in there and then use the extra water, put a tea bag and drink my tea out of the pot. Um, I couldn't do that in the morning cause I had my oats in here. So that's just something I really wanna get a lightweight mug for next time. But very easy pot and cooking setup. Also I said MRE earlier, that means meals ready to eat. I learned that term on the trail. Basically it's these dehydrated packets that you can get from REI or other stores. I chop at REI mostly, um, not, also not sponsored. I wish, but it's basically these dehydrated meals that you just pour hot water in, let it sit for like 20 minutes and then you have a meal. The two I had were a Santa Fe style chicken, rice and beans. 
um, not from this brand, from another one. And then from this brand, I had the three bean chili. Quick food review, the three bean chili, the part that was like tomato and all the spices and onion, that didn't completely dissolve. Um, it might've been because I was at higher elevation, so I just didn't wait long enough, but that one wasn't quite as good, but I didn't know what to get. My friend got me this one, this one in the three bean chili and then the Santa Fe chicken I just picked out myself. Yeah, I kind of wish they did like a sample thing because I was just looking at what everyone else had. It was kind of fun seeing all the options and everyone was raving about the lasagna. So get the lasagna, get the chance. Oh wait, also one more note on the MREs. I was thinking if I do this more from a sustainability perspective, because if you didn't know, a lot of my videos have to do with environmental science and sustainability. Um, I wanna make my own because first of all, these are expensive. The one I paid for was like 15 bucks, which I'm, or no, okay, 13 bucks, but still kind of expensive for just a dehydrated meal. So I was thinking how cool would it be to get like a dehydrator machine and then you can use these stasher bags, which are reusable like silicone plastic bags. Um, put the dehydrated food in there and those bags can handle hot water. So essentially make your own MREs, which I think is really cool and I would like to try it in the future. I think it would be pretty easy to do with things like beans and vegetables, like the chili type meal. See if I have anything else before going on to close. Oh, on my last trip to REI, I also bought this emergency blanket. It was $5. I'm like looking at my notes. Um, $5 emergency blanket. Uh, I didn't use it, thankfully, but I thought maybe it was a smart thing to have. Also that fire bean I showed you earlier was $15. Oh, I didn't even go to the bottom pouch yet. Okay, I'll do that after. <laughs> Sorry, so much stuff. And I'm realizing I should have cleared this out earlier when I got back yesterday, because it's wet. Swimsuit, if you want to go swimming at Little Harbor, me and a lot of the other people I hiked with and met along the trail did go for a swim. It was crisp and refreshing, but not terrible. Fun experience, I would recommend it. And then you have that towel I showed you earlier for after you swim. I brought two pairs of hiking leggings. These are the Lulu Wonder Trains. They're some of my favorite leggings. And then this is some random pair I've had for ages from Victoria's Secret. Both good. I wore these ones twice, this one once. I wouldn't recommend bringing three pairs. I don't think you need them. With that, I only really brought this one Lulu tank top that I actually bought off my friend ages ago and then hemmed because it was longer before. And it has a built-in bra thing in it. Um, I wore that every single day. And that was my first layer. My second layer on some of the days was this short sleeve smart wool shirt. That was good when I thought it was too hot for this other long sleeve Lulu shirt that I was wearing. Also thrifted, shout out to my friend Claire who thrift flips and found this for me and I saw her post it and I was like, can you get that for me? I really want it. This was more critical. I liked having this because it's thin, lightweight and also good to protect me from the sun because it's not too hot, but you know, reflective. Um, and I wore that over this black tank most of the time. I had this short sleeves top that I wore some of the times, but looking back, it showed sweat a lot to be honest, and it helped protect my shoulders from the pack when I wore my tank top, but I probably didn't need it in reality. I had brought a sports bra in case I just wanted to wear the t-shirt with the sports bra, never wore that. On top of the long sleeve, I would wear this Kathmandu down puffer jacket that I have. I bought this in Australia when I was living there. It's an Australian slash New Zealand brand. I don't know which brand it is. Um, and then I have this rain cover that goes with it. I bought it, it's like called a five in one jacket. I was so stoked when I got it. It was, there was mega sales. So I was able to get it for pretty cheap. Um, you can take the arms off and it can become a vest, which I do sometimes when I'm hiking. Didn't do it this trip, but this is really nice. And then this goes over it and there's parts that it clips on it. Um, it never rained. Luckily, but I did wear this at night just to kind of hold in the warmth at one point. I did take it off when I went into my sleeping bag, but it was nice at points. Definitely bring a puffer jacket though. Nothing else in that pocket. Now, there's a bottom pocket, which is where you wanna put the your nighttime stuff, like your sleepy time things. In this bottom pocket is where you wanna put some more lightweight things. If you noticed, I kinda of had the heavyweight things in the main pocket. That was like the tent and the cooking stuff, and then I shoved my clothes, towels, stuff, Birkenstocks in the pockets, or not the pockets, in the areas in between. This is some lighter weight stuff on the bottom. First is my Nemo sleeping pad. This is my mom's, I said mine, it's my mom's. Um, really good sleeping pad, it's blow up compared to the one that folds. I saw some reviews online saying they get little nicks and holes in them, but I found it really good. And even though I'm a slide sleeper, my hip and my shoulder did not hit the cold floor. Sleeping pads are super important, this I did not know. Um, because the ground at night absorbs heat from your body. And so if you sleep directly on the ground, it gets really cold. So this, and I didn't even need a pump for it. There's like a cool bag inflatable system. My pillow was this little inflatable pillow as well. Also very small and lightweight, 
but I did hate it. I'm very picky when it comes to pillows. I was recommended this like Nemo memory, Nemo filio memory foam pillow. I'm putting that on my REI wish list as well. And in the nighttime, I wore a long sleeve smart wool top. And then I also had smart wool leggings. I have so much smart wool stuff, I don't know why. Um, and then I wore my puffer jacket I showed before, also in my sleeping bag. The first night I got warm enough where I took it off and eventually put it back on. And then the second night I just slept with it the whole night through. My beanie, this one. <laughs> This is from REI, I got it a couple years ago for Christmas. It's lined and really nice and I like that it has the fold down portion because I kind of put it over my eyes and it kept everything very warm. Mittens, these are random ones I got from Target ages ago. I like them because the finger pads work on your phone and your Kindle, but I did rip a hole in the fingertip this time. So I'm in need of new gloves that are probably also a little warmer than $5 Target ones. My socks, homemade wool socks. Make sure you have an extra pair of socks for when you're sleeping versus your hiking socks. You'll really appreciate it when you strip off your hiking socks for the day, put on your cozy socks and slip the burks over it. On the note of socks, I brought two pairs of hiking socks. Both of them are smart wool hiking socks. I've had them for a long time and I kind of want to try darn tough. That's what everyone talks about when it comes to hiking socks. And also, like I mentioned earlier, I want to try to get liner socks to prevent my feet from sliding around to prevent those blisters that I do get into the laundry bin. Last thing, these are inside out. But I did bring a pair of shorts just in case I did get too warm in the leggings. Um, I never actually wore them on the hike. It was useful when I got to Little Harbor on day two and I wanted to change out of my leggings and go for a swim. I do think it's nice to have a pair of shorts. I probably could have hiked in biker shorts at one point. It wasn't really that cold and most of the trails exposed. Okay. What am I missing? Side pockets. Uh, another face sunscreen, chapstick, bug repellent. So mosquitoes weren't out, which I was very grateful for, but people do talk about ticks being prevalent in certain areas. So I would just spray up a little bit on my arms when I didn't have that long sleeve on. Gum. I brought a little mic setup, a little lavalier mic setup. I didn't use it. So my video that I'm posting from the hike, um, hair tie, is just audio from the normal mic. So hopefully that's good enough. Another chapstick, my Australian one that I'm almost out of, which I'll be sad when it runs out. Another hair tie, extra batteries, and then tissues because my nose was a bit runny on the hike because I was just breathing hard and sniffling. Final thing before I talk about regrets and what I would change and those things. Water. There is places on the trail to get water. There's also water at your campsite. So I would recommend, what did I bring? I had three and a half liters of water. So I have this two and a half liter Osprey pack that I've had for ages. Um, and this backpack has a little spot for you to stick it in. And this is what I drink out of most of the time on the hike. One of the guys I met on the hike also has this pump thing that goes with it. So it allows you to not have to like use as much energy to suck out of the water. So that's a wish list item as well. And then for the extra liter of water, I just use one of these Carlsbad waters um, that I know plastic bottles bad, but my mom really likes these. So we do typically have some of them in the garage. And I was gonna buy Nalgene. They were kind of heavier than I thought they would be. And I was like, I'll just use this and refill it for now. And if I want a Nalgene in the future, I'll get one. I don't have a Nalgene now. I feel like I should have one already, but my normal reusable water bottle are these heavier ones from Costco. Then I have like this smaller dopper, like a Dutch brand, but that would be too small. So this was a good size. And I would recommend having a water bottle you can pour from in addition to the bladder bottle because of like filling up your hot water and just nighttime I had this in my tent. Good to have. I think that's it. Oh, in my pack on the way home, I bought a little mini bison at the general store in Two Harbors because I wanted to commemorate my first backpacking experience on my own. And it was just really cute. I felt like I needed that. I think that's everything. Really quick, looking back, I kind of talked about what I regret bringing or what I didn't use. Oh, also I have the camera that I'm filming on, of course. Um, this is my Sony Alpha 6400. I've had it for ages. I love it to take pictures. Most of the videos I just took on my iPhone, which I also had for the trip. I want a place to clip on a camera and also my phone so I have it easier access on my pack. I just found it kind of annoying hiking with my camera and also sometimes I'd have my trekking poles, which is the other thing I had. Bring trekking poles. Don't forget trekking poles. Those are downstairs. Very important, trekking poles. There's a lot of up and downhill. You will need them and want them. It was kind of annoying using trekking poles and holding my phone. I did it, but just putting it in the pocket was kind of annoying. I found it annoying. That's it. I think I talked about what I wish I had what I want for the future. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Um, I know this is kind of different from my normal content, but I want to do some more adventure, outdoorsy stuff in addition to my sustainability and science lifestyle things. So let me know if you found it interesting. Um, if anyone even watches it, hopefully you do. And hopefully you found it useful. And if you hike on the trail, let me know because I found it really, really cool and I'd recommend it to anyone. And I want to go back and do Parsons Landing. Oh, also uh, like and subscribe because it's YouTube. Good, okay, bye.